Welcome back to a series of videos that are centered around Amazon Web Services and an Ansible Practice Lab, the old two for one. So we're learning about AWS as we go here. And of course, we're also going to be taking a good look at Ansible as we're setting up a practice lab in the cloud for Ansible. So to kind of set the stage here, remember, I have these two instances that I created of Ansible devices. We have the Ansible control node, and this is going to be the device that is running Ansible and will automate other systems. And then one of those other systems is right here. It's the Ansible underscore host one. And I'll be creating some more devices that we're going to control from Ansible later on. But one of the things that we need to do in this video is install Ansible on the control node. Remember, Ansible is agentless. So that is one of the wonders about it. It means that we don't have to go out to the devices that we're going to control and install any software but we definitely need to install Ansible itself on what we call the control node. So that is something that we are going to be doing together. So one of the things that I wanted to point out to you that I didn't mention in the last video where we created all of this is, remember, you can take snapshots of these EC2 instances, and now might be a really great time. So if I go under the, well, we could create an image. That's pretty cool. But if we come over here and we go to snapshots, notice we have the ability to take this system and create a snapshot of it. And that's pretty cool because that would allow us to get back to this pre-Ansible installation point anytime we want to on this machine. Now, notice we're going to need to know at least the last few letters of our instance identifier if we want to create a snapshot of it. So let me go back here to our EC2 instances, and I'm going to take a look at the instance ID, and it's 7AS for this control node right here. So let me go under snapshots. Let me create a new snapshot of our instance that we want a snapshot of, and it's 786. There it is. There's the instance, and I'll say pre-Ansible install. So we could do the installation multiple times, potentially different ways, and we want to include the root volume, of course, and we would like to cap copy the tags from the volume, and that's it. Create snapshot. Now, it just so happens to be that my machine, the EC2 instance, is in the shutdown state, but please note that that is not a requirement. So we could have been running here with our control node. In fact, that's something that I need to do right now is I need to go into the instance state and I need to fire up that control node because the main objective of this video is for us to go in and do the Ansible installation on that node. But if we come back to volumes, uh, not volumes, snapshots, there we go. We can see that snapshot is just cooking away. By the way, I'll do a little cleanup here. This is something I did in the live class where I was teaching Ansible in South Carolina, and I can clean that up because we no longer need it. We're about 99% of the way there on that snapshot. You would want to make sure that you got that good, healthy snapshot if you were interested in staging the lab construction this way so you could quickly roll back things. You would want to make sure that's 100% complete before coming in and doing your Ansible install. But we're ready to do that now. So I'm going to get my connect SSH string and we're going to copy that. We're going to close that and I am going to fire up a terminal and we are going to make sure that I'm in the directory of my AWS keys. And then we are going to paste our SSH syntax in there to connect. And we are inside that Amazon Linux 2 running instance. And now we are ready to install Ansible. So let's do this. Let's go over to Google and I am going to do an Ansible documentation. That's going to be my Google search. And the latest Ansible documentation is going to be right here for you. So notice 
inside the Ansible documentation at docs.ansible.com, you have a drop down for the version that you are wanting to work with. And notice there is an installation guide. And there's all of these flavors of Linux that would support the Ansible installation. Pretty cool. And we are going to choose our version. Now, remember, we were working with the Amazon Linux 2 device as our control node. And I know that's based on CentOS and Red Hat Linux. So that's the type of installation that we're going to do. And notice we can use yum in order to install Ansible. So here I am at the command line of my system and I'm going to paste in our sudo yum install Ansible command from the Ansible documentation. And ooh, this doesn't look good. It says Ansible is available in Amazon Linux extra topic Ansible 2. So to use, we're going to do sudo Amazon Linux extras install Ansible. Wow. So uh, this wasn't documented, I don't believe, back in the Ansible documentation. This is how we're going to perform the installation if we're on our Amazon Linux 2 box. So there we go. We're going to say yes to the prompt here to get the required libraries installed. And this is super interesting. I'm so glad that I picked this image to be our control node because we have a slightly different installation there, don't we, of Ansible. So it appears to us to have functioned. I didn't note any error message. It's time to verify we've got Ansible. So what I'm going to do is let's change to the root directory. I'm going to do a CD and then I'm going to do Ansible and then I'll list and this looks good. So an Etsy Ansible directory was created. There's the Ansible CFG configuration file inside. There's the default inventory file of hosts and there's a directory for roles. So this looks great. This is what I would expect to see uh, for the Ansible installation. The last verification I'll do here is an Ansible version. And we can see, all right, this looks great. So Amazon AWS gave us version 285 of Ansible. They placed the configuration file here. They did a module search path for us, a Ansible Python module location for us, the executable location, and the Python version that we're running is reported. So we get great information about Ansible, which does indeed to appear to be running wonderful. I suppose you could test a quick ad hoc command against your local system. We could do this with local host, Ansible local host, and I could call the ping module to try and run a ping using Ansible against my local host. And wow, awesome. So we can see this JSON formatted output that we ran a ping per Ansible the Ansible module called ping against this local system. There were no changes, but we did have output from the device of Pong, which is the default output uh, fun there inside of the Ansible module called ping. So we had success issuing this command against our local system. Ansible automated the ping of our local system. And that's just a fun little test to go beyond verifying with just Ansible tac tac version as we did above. So things are looking great in our Ansible installation. I love it. And we saw a couple of interesting things here. One of them being that, yeah, while we were attempting to follow the Red Hat Linux or CentOS Linux approach, because we were on the Amazon uh, Linux uh, version two, image, we actually were prompted to do the installation a different way, ut utilizing the AWS tools. So great stuff to see. And we are trucking along in this Ansible practice lab that we're building together in AWS. Thanks so much for joining me.